Hallelujah. God bless everybody that is on right now. This is the prophet Lovi, and I'm here with my daughter. And uh, I'm just blessed to have everybody coming on. And I'm excited about what God is going to be saying and doing today. Um, and I'm ready to give you what God is saying. So I want you to be ready. I want you to be prepared. Because I want to speak about destroying the spirit of fear. Destroying the spirit of fear. Uh, I want everybody to share this as much as you can. Uh, as yeah. much as you can because this is, uh, uh, is going to bless somebody in Jesus' name. You know, one thing about me is that it doesn't matter how physically I am. I will do God's work at all costs. doesn't matter to me. But uh, I'm glad everybody is here. I'm glad everybody is ready to learn. It doesn't matter the time, but somebody will be blessed. So I want you to share this because as we speak, you're going to grow and you're going to be strong in the things of God. But this is about to be powerful, destroying the spirit of fear. Amen. What are the misconceptions about the spirit of fear? What is the spirit of fear? What is it? Where does it come from? What is it all about? And what I'm going to tell you is going to shock a lot of people. It's going to shake a lot of people. And it's going to bother a lot of people. Because some of you, uh, you've been raised in the wrong doctrine. And a prophet's job is to come and tell you God's mind, not what we feel like. You know, the biggest mistake I've come to see is that uh, a lot of people they move with what was said to them, mm -hmm. not necessarily what the Bible is saying. So if God says something and they were told differently, they will battle. If you look at the past few videos I've been doing about the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that, people are confused because they simply don't read the Bible. But yeah. those who got it, they got it and they got it strong. And those who did not get it, did not get it. So uh, I am excited to talk about this because I know this is going to change somebody's life for good. Amen. Amen. So I want everybody to get ready. Make sure you get a pen. I want you to invite somebody, let somebody know because this is going to be one like no other. Amen. And I'm just going to start at the deep end. Let's do it. There's no spirit of fear. Oh. There is no demon of fear doesn't exist. It's a lie. Uh. There was no demon in heaven providing people with fear. It doesn't exist. There is no verse in the Bible that you find that is talking about a spirit called fear. Nothing. The only fears that are spoken about, I'll give you right now in the Bible. The main one that the Bible speaks about is the fear of the Lord, right. which is reverence for God. Mm -hmm. Then there's the fear of men. You see people, you're intimidated by them. Right. Mm -hmm. The fear of men. The fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. if I, what is going to happen if I do this? The fear of the future. Mm -hmm. I don't know what will come. And the fear of the devil. Okay. But fear is an emotion, is an emotional response to a situation that you don't fully understand. Yeah. You can't sit. The reason why children are not afraid is because they have no database of any disappointment in their life. Mommy is always there, dad is always there, food is always there. They have never worked a job in their life. So a child cannot be afraid. Mm -hmm. You could tell a child, jump from the fifth floor, they will jump. The day they hurt themselves, then they will have doubt. They will say, mm, there's a possibility you can hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. Fear begins to manifest because they know that it is a pos there is a possibility. What if you don't catch me? Mm -hmm. What will happen to me? I feel like this may be for the wrong people. I don't know if I'm teaching somebody. 
There is no verse in the Bible that tells you there's a demon of fear. So when people are saying, I rebuke the spirit of fear, what are they rebuking? You can't. You cannot rebuke the soul. You cannot rebuke emotion. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. There is no demon of fear. It's a lie. You have to understand that the primary function of the devil is to lie to you. Deception. Mm -hmm. Deception is the main instrument of fear. Somebody look, uh, my daughter Renate asked 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Read it. Uh-huh. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yeah, okay, now look at that. It's very simple. It's actually very simple to explain. Open it. Second Timothy, what is it? Uh, Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. seven. Uh-huh. I was actually going to read it. Huh? For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Why is he saying God has not given us the spirit of fear? Meaning, what is he saying? He's not talking about a spirit that you're given. He's talking about your human spirit. Amen. Oh. God has not given you mm. a spirit that mm. is, is composed of fear. But what is he talking about? But of power and of love and of, love mm-hmm. and of a sound mind. Yes. If he's talking about a mind, is it a spirit? No. He's talking about the condition of your soul. Yes. So it's not talking about a spirit that God has sent. Remember, God sent a spirit to torment Saul. Mm. And Saul had his own anxieties about somebody taking the throne from him. But there was no demon of fear. Mm -hmm. It's all mental. (laughs) Ah, big time. Ah. Because it's a lie of the devil. God has not given you. You cannot be, if it is something that God is giving, it means that it's not of the devil. God has not given you fear. What is he saying? He did not create it in you. Because the only one who births and gives spirit is God. But your spirit carries what? Power, Mm -hmm. love, and a sound mind. This is the condition of a regenerated spirit. The old man was afraid of death because death was the end. So you feared that if I die, I'm going to hell. But the new man is not afraid of hell because he's alive. He's not dying. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Uh. You have a question? Ask. Nah, I just got it. You, so you spoke about the you know, there are angels in heaven. Yes. And the fallen angels, they, they perverted their... You know, yes, they were yeah. So if God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of, what does it say, a sound power, mind? Power. Of love. And love. And a sound mind. But, but I understand when I'm in fear, power is taken away from me. I'm afraid to move. Yes. yes. Love. How, so can you, uh, how can you make any, because remember, for the devil to defeat you, he has to distort your mind. If your, percep- if your perception and your thinking of what God is and who God is, of what reality is, mm-hmm. you're already destroyed. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Talking to me. Oh, man. There is no spirit of fear. I rebuke spirit of fear. Where? <laughs> Every time a man was afraid in the Bible, God said, do not be afraid. He did not say, begin to rebuke. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you know. The, the thing about it is this. This is why we need the spirit of revelation. Mm-hmm. This is why we need the spirit of understanding. Mm-hmm. There's a book that I'm writing called The Seven Spirits of God. The yeah. Seven Manifestation or The Sevenfold uh, Spirits of God. Mm-hmm. And it's going to talk about a lot of these things. Yeah. But the spirit of fear doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's, a, it's a mental condition. Mm-hmm. It's uncertainty. Mm-hmm. I just feel fear. I bind it. I bind it. No, 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 no. You are just not sure. Some of you will be praying. 
if, 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 if some of you, you pray, you're closing. Let me tell you the truth. Some of you are about to have angelic visitations, but you stopped it. There are so many people that are watching me right now. Angels were about to appear to you, but they stopped it. Let me tell you how they stopped it. You began to pray. You're praying. You're speaking to God. All of a sudden, you felt like somebody was standing yeah. next to you. Yeah. Instead of you being excited, mm -hmm. saying, God is visiting me, mm -hmm. your first instinct is like, who is here? Yes. The angel leaves because he knows that you're, you're afraid. Uh. I don't want to stop you from encountering God. I will back off until when you are ready to experience these things. Because remember, every time an angel appeared to men of God, they were shocked mm -hmm. and they were in fear and they would say, don't be afraid. But you have been taught in church that if you feel a presence and you're afraid, it means it's the devil. Ah, yes. uh, I, I just corrected some people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So many people have stopped God from visiting them because of that. God was just about to visit you and manifest himself to you. But you got scared. God says, ah, they are not ready. He will stop. Because God sees your, you know, God is a reactor. He looks at your heart. Mm -hmm. If this experience is going to make you more of an unbeliever than a believer, God is not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Even angels think like that. They know that they have to appear to you at your level. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Yes. Yes. But you are afraid because you are not purified by love. Let's go to the Bible. Uh, my daughter, you're going to read today. Uh, Is that fine? Yes. Awesome. Uh, I, I wish somebody, I wish I had some people that are ready. ready. Hallelujah. Uh, give me one second. And I want you to go to First uh, John chapter 4 verse 18. First John chapter 4, verse 18. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. King James, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh -huh. There is no fear in love, uh -huh. but perfect love casteth out fear, uh -huh. because fear hath torment. Uh -huh. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He's not made perfect, meaning there's nothing that is tormenting you. It's you, you're tormenting yourself. Ooh. Read it one more time. There is no fear in love, uh -huh. but perfect love casteth out fear, uh -huh. because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. You're not purified in love, meaning your confidence. Remember, love is not a feeling. This is where a lot of people are lost when it comes to love. Mm -hmm. They think love means uh, I am emotional about things. Oh, how I feel about things. Oh, the way you make me feel. That's not love. Mm -hmm. That's affection. Mm -hmm. We have positive affection and negative affection. If somebody is not good to you, you have negative aff affection towards them. You don't want them to be close to you. Mm -hmm. If somebody is being good to you, you want them close to you. But that's not love. Because somebody can fake their way to your heart. This is why we have so many people that are disappointed in relationships because people lied to them with flowers and roses and then they got in your bed and then they bailed. Mm -hmm. ghost. They, they went ghost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only reason they did that is because they were buying their way into your heart by n using affection mm -hmm. to lie to you that they love you. Mm -hmm. If somebody looks at you and tells you, you know, I don't believe in liking people. There's a, like, like is an in-between. There's, there's no such thing in the Bible. You either love somebody or not, but there are different levels of love. I love you like a sister. I love you like a brother. I love you as a wife. I love you as a girlfriend. I love you with the love of God, which is a general love. I love you from a distance. I love you from a distance. All this, uh, but it's love is love. Mm -hmm. Because it's a decision to engage with somebody from a certain dimension of life. I don't know if people are following this. So it's simply, this is simply the, the inability. It's the inability of people to truly trust in God 
and what God has decided for your life. Love is a verb, is a doing word. Mm -hmm. God has decided that he loves you, that he has great plans for you, Mm -hmm. that he will make everything possible to make your future be what it's supposed to be because he loves you. If you don't believe in that love, you are not perfected in love because works are still involved. And because you know your insufficiency and your weaknesses, your instabilities, your shortcomings, you fall into fear because you believe everything depends on you and not him. I don't know if somebody's hearing me. Uh, This is why the Lord Jesus said this. Do not care for nothing. If the flowers are dressed perfectly, even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like this. The birds don't sow. They don't do anything, but they are always eating. How much more for you? What he was trying to tell them. God created everything and he loves everything. But how about you who are the crown of his creation? Mm -hmm. So the devil knows that so many people are not perfected and they are not purified in love. So they fear because of uncertainty, because fear is a result of not knowing what will come. So there is demons torment you by using your own mind to not believe in the love of God. So they use that as a channel to to torment you. That is why you see, uh, uh, you see the apostles who are in prison, they praised God. Yes. Yes. They said to die is gain. That is somebody that is purified by love. Mm. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Mm. Somebody who is saying to die is gain. He's purified by love. He knows that where am I going from his presence? If I die, he's there. If I go to heaven, he's there. Right. I'm good. The Apostle Paul even went as far as to say, to, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Somebody is telling you to die is gain. That is somebody that is purified in love. A person that is not purified in love carries fear, but fear is a natural instinct in a man because the soul desires to know tomorrow. Yes. Mm, yes. The soul is always thinking about what happened yesterday. Like when the Bible says there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. Why is he telling you that? God is not condemning you. Stop blaming yourself about what you did yesterday. But fear says that what I did yesterday will catch up to me. I disappointed God. I may end up in hell. So what that does is it torments you and it opens a door for a demon to come in and mess with you. It is you yourself punishing yourself where God is not punishing you. Fear is a result of not knowing who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. I'm talking to myself. I thought I was teaching something powerful for, to somebody. No, it's powerful. It's good. I don't know where my next paycheck is going to come from. Mm-hmm. Yet every other month you never lacked rent. Right. Maybe you didn't even, let's pretend you didn't afford to pay rent, but you had somewhere to sleep. But for you, it's not enough because God is trying to teach you to depend on him, but you're not still seeing it. The Bible says, uh, 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 David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children beg for bread. Remember, this is a man who ran away from Saul. He was in the wilderness. He was rejected. He went through all seasons of life, but he realized there is a common thread in all these things. No matter what point of the spectrum I was, there was always provision for where I was. Mm. Joseph never changed because he was purified by the love of God. When they threw him in the pit, he still loved his brothers. 
When he was taken to Potiphar's house, the love that was in him made him do even better in Potiphar's house. They threw him in prison. Even there, the love of God was still shining in him. When he was promoted to the throne, he was still full of love that when he saw his brothers, he went to the corner and cried and understood that the plan of God was to send him ahead of his family in order to protect them, to preserve them. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Fear stops you from entering where God wants you to be. Oh. I, I, I don't know if people are hearing me on this side. Fear simply comes to stop you from entering where God wants you to be. Uh, look at this. Let me, let me explain it like this. Let me explain it like this. Mount Sinai was always there. Everybody was afraid to go on it, yet it is God. That's a big contradiction. How can you know God is in a place but you're afraid to go? Because you're like, if I go, I will die. Nobody should touch the mountain. If you touch it, you die. You get close, you die. If you do this, you die. Stay away from God because he is too holy. Yet God's hands are open for anybody to come. Then there was a man called Moses that came from Egypt that had no idea about this God of the Hebrews. Mm. He sees a fire on the mountain. He said, let me go and see this fire because nobody was going to see this fire. And when he went up there, he had a mighty encounter with God that it changed him to become a deliverer of men. That when they came back now, when he brought the whole children of Israel back to the same mountain, Mm. they said, Moses, we want to meet God also. You keep telling us that God is speaking to you. We want to meet God also. God was actually happy. God said, tell them to purify themselves and to prepare themselves. I am going to come down and meet them. They purified themselves. But when God began to descend, they they told Moses, Moses, we are good. Keep talking to God and pass the message to us. (laughs) What stopped them was the fear of their doing. They believed that it was going to judge them. If God appears and I die, where am I going? I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. How can I die when I'm meeting the source of life? I don't know if you have any question before I go a little deeper. (laughs) Maybe I should spare this now and then come back to it tomorrow. (laughs) I don't know. I see the great apostle Omar. uh, I love this man of God. What What a great general and a great mentor to many and a great father to many. There are people who are fighting. You see, this is the thing that people don't like about prophets. When a prophet comes, he comes to correct error. I come to show you that you're fighting what you don't know. The only cure of fear is believing fully in the love of God. That is the only cure for fear. There's nothing that you don't remove fear because you're worshiping God. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many times I was in terror when an angel was up here? (laughs) But then you come to understand that's what you're waiting for. Mm -hmm. What harm could ever happen to you when you're in prayer? What better place should a demonic attack find you than in a place of prayer? Mm. It's the best place to be, in the place of prayer, in the presence of God. But we fear the presence of God just as much as we fear the devil. That's true. You're praying by yourself, a car is passing and it flashes light, you open in the name of Jesus. And oh. <laughs> 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 I am simply here to make your prayer life easy. Amen. That is my work as a prophet, is to make your work easy in approaching God. I come to show you the way. Amen. Stop wasting your, self, your, your time binding demons of fear. There's no demon of fear, it's a lie. Amen. So really, it's like, it's really us in our minds a hundred percent. So it's really so. When you were talking about before, you yes, talked about how um, it's one of those things where where we have to, sub, you know, when you're talking about submission, yes, um, and we have, when we have to humble ourselves, yes. So like that's that's something that we have to do. That that's our responsibility. Okay, so, an example is this. Think about it like this. Mm. You know, I'm your spiritual father. Yes. You know how I love to teach everybody. Yes. Okay. 
okay, let's even change it. Let's make it even more for people who maybe they don't understand spiritual families. Let me make it even more plain. Mm -hmm. I have left you a billion dollars. Okay? And I left a will that you have to read and find out that there is millions left for you. Mm. And I am gone, I'm not in the picture. Whose responsibility it is to know that you have millions? You, me, yeah. not me. So if you're suffering because of poverty, it's your fault because there was millions left for you. Uh -huh. Because you know your dad was doing well, you never bothered to look at the will because of fear. Mm. That's how the children of God are. They don't open the Bible mm. to actually know the truth of their inheritance in Christ. Mm. So they are always panicking. Yes. They are always fearing. They are always afraid. And what fear has done is it has crippled the children of God. It has literally crippled the people of God. Yes. Because they don't read the Bible. The truth of who Jesus is is so small to them. It's easy to tell somebody, God is good, but when you're going through the fire, look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. They said, O oh, king, even if you throw us in the fire, our God is able to deliver us. That means that they were not afraid of fire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When a situation rises up, the Bible tells you your father, your brother, your sister, your children, your husband, they will turn against you, but God will never turn or forsake you. Don't you think when you go through those situations, you're being built to believe in God better? You are. That's all it is. You are. But if you panic and you make excuses that don't exist within it, that's why Job never cursed God. Job had no fear in him. Mm -hmm. Everything is gone, he gets on his knees and he says, naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I will go back. Glory be to God. His wife comes and says, cast God and die. He said, shall I only accept good from him and not the bad? What was he trying to say? God is not changing. Right. He said, even though he slay me, I will not stop loving him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he knew everything that God does, it's for your increase, it's for your good. Yeah. <laughs> everything that God will ever permit to happen in your life is for your good. It took you to be in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. It took some to be in a bad relationship. Yeah. It took some to go through disappointments for you to know what is the right relationship, what is the right church, what is the right people, what is the right friends. Unless you go through those things, who do you think, okay, let me show you an example of the misconception of the people of God. The Bible says, and the heavens opened, and there was a voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The Bible says, then the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. So when God loves you, he will put you in a place you'll be tested so that you can learn to depend on him. God will allow you. I, I thought I would get more people to share this because this is helping people. <laughs> Every single thing that God has, if you are in Christ, nothing is happening to you unless God permitted it. Yes. Mm, yes. But believers don't believe that. But if you look through the scriptures, Job believes that, Moses believes that, Abraham believes that. Every one of them believe that. The Lord Jesus believed that. Why is it that people are not believing that? It's because you don't really understand spiritual things. Mm -hmm. The devil uses, this is how, okay, the devil has been on earth so long. Mm. He knows if I pinch you, you're going to go, ow. Yes. Yeah. So he knows if I poke here, you're going to react like this. Yeah. If I poke there, you're going to react like this. If I poke over there, you're going to react like this. Mm. Let me find a way to make you to react. Because he knows the human soul, if it is not changed, renewed by the word of God, it has a breaking point. Mm -hmm. But also God knows, if I stretch you beyond where you thought your breaking point is, 
then you will never have a breaking point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, Bishop, oh, Bishop, good. Bishop, you have a question. Oh, that's good. as children of God get to the point uh, 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 fully I don't even know the question to tell you the truth the answer answer is very simple how do we get to that that point meditate on the word of God you said meditate yes you have to know the love of God you have to know first of all anyone that is this is why I don't pray for God's protection Mm -hmm. I know somebody is shocked (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't know if somebody's going to hear this. When I go to sleep, mm-hmm. I don't pray God protect me. <coughs> I don't. I don't know if somebody's hearing me. Cloud, can I have another one? Another one of this. I don't. I don't pray God as I lay me down to sleep protect me. My son never has to ask me, Dad, I'm going to sleep. Can you watch over me? Mm -hmm. He knows that Dad will make sure every door is locked. He will make sure that the house is secure before he goes to sleep. I can sleep. He knows. He, he, He doesn't have to come and say, Dad, I'm about to go to sleep. Please protect me. All he would tell me is, Dad, I'm going to bed. I'll be like, all right, son, see you in the morning. But when he goes to sleep, I am the last person that goes to sleep. Because I have to make sure every gate is locked. Every door is locked. I will go double check, make sure he's laying properly. He's not rolled over almost <laughs> off the bed. The Bible says, he, God gives sleep to his beloved. <laughs> so if you're God's Amen. beloved, you should sleep comfortably. I don't need to ask God for me to sleep well. Ah, I know some people... Huh? He, told he, you. he said he gives sleep to his beloved. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm sorry. I feel like. Did Jacob pray for God to visit him when he went to bed? No. Not that that's a bad prayer. You can say, Lord, when I go to sleep, speak to me tonight. That's a good prayer. But to say, God, I pray for your angelic protection. You are saying God doesn't know that you need to go to bed, and God doesn't know that you need to be protected. Do you really know who God is? He says, if you evil parents know how to give good gifts, how much more for God, who there is no evil in him? The Bible says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee. Since the day you were in your mother's womb, sometimes, let me tell you, when I look at pregnant women, Mm -hmm. do you want to know how I know people are pregnant? Mm -hmm. I see, uh, because usually every human being has one angel. Mm -hmm. When I see a lady with another angel, I know there's a baby inside of oh, her. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. It's okay, go ahead. Um, uh, I had a question about, I don't know, I just thought of pray, pray, uh, prayer and fasting, fasting and prayer. Yes. Will that, will that help even more? No, because you can fast and pray in fear. Let me explain to you. Perfect love casts out fear. Mm -hmm. God has chosen to love you. You need to study about this love. Mm -hmm. The love of God comes from his grace, unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. You need to understand what the favor of God is, the, the grace of God is. So in order for you to lean and completely trust in it, because there are two things that God tells you that grow says, in the last days, the hunger of the word of God shall increase, meaning people will grow in their understanding of the word Mm. and people will grow in grace. The Bible literally says, grow in grace. Grow in your ability to lean on God. There are people who lean on God just a little bit. There are people who lean just a little bit more. Then there are people like Prophet Lovi that just, Just. we are just floating. The grace of God is what every believer should completely rely on. Because let me tell you, the moment you think God is going to do something because I prayed, that's pride. Yes, okay, that's what it is. The moment you say, because I fasted, God must answer me, that's pride. Wow. 
Because God is not obligated to anybody. He's not a genie in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God does these things because he loves. Mm -hmm. Fasting does not change God, but he changes us. Mm -hmm. Prayer does not change God, he changes us. Mm -hmm. He teaches us to depend on him, but not him. He already knows what you want. If Jesus is saying, God already knows what you need before you ask him, it means that it's pointless to ask him. He doesn't mind you speaking to him, uh -huh. but it is for you to release your soul because the, loss, the soul needs to unload. But there's a certain level that you get to that you don't pray for things anymore. Uh -huh. You give thanks for them because you know the provision is there. When you need something, it's because the provision is there. Yeah. Because there is nothing that will ever appear in your life that the answer was already not there. Because your situation is a call to an answer that already exists. <laughs> so, so it's our, it, it's, I'm just trying to understand why we as, as, as believers because you are not be, because be, no, it's not because you have been taught works I, let me tell you yeah I can, I can see you've been taught works an example is I wrote and I said uh, I did the, the, the last video we posted and I said and I talked about Jesus becoming sin for us some people are saying, no, but you still need to live righteous in order for that to be true. Yet the Bible is saying Jesus is your righteousness. Mm -hmm. and, but the Bible is saying yeah. your righteousness is like filthy rags. God is saying abandon trying to be good. Mm -hmm. Depending, depend on me being the only good you, never ever, you ever, ever need to be. Just believe in what I have done. Apply yourself to what I have done. I'm already the only righteousness you ever need. You will never become righteous. Anything that I do to say that I am perfect, I am wearing filthy rags in the presence of God. That is why in the Bible, when people wanted to fast and pray, mm -hmm. they would put on sackcloths. What, they would be, what does the sackcloth mean? The sackcloth used to say, Lord, my righteousness is not good enough. I need you. That's what the sackcloth means. That's why they would abandon, like the people in Nineveh, they would abandon what was beautiful. To wear what was not beautiful. Mm -hmm. To submit themselves to say, God, my righteousness is like filthy rags. Without you, I am done. Mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, I, I, I thought people on Facebook will share, people on, on YouTube will share more. I thought people will be sharing from everywhere. So, so the grace of God, sorry my daughter, no, the grace of God is the key to everything. Listen, I have stood in the presence of Jesus. There is nothing you can do to qualify you to stand there. Oh. The great Bishop Juma. Ah, my brother, I love you too much. <laughs> there is nothing in your life you ever do that will qualify you to stand before God. You can't. It's only His grace that has brought us to Him. His love has brought a, the Bible says you've been saved you've been saved by what grace through faith yeah. so the unmerited favor is what brought salvation yeah. so God is saying lean on faith grow, uh, lean on on grace because faith is only okay let me tell you the purpose of faith because faith is also misunderstood yeah, Facebook keep sharing let me explain to you why faith is misunderstood people say i'm just gonna i'm gonna act out of faith mm -hmm. there's no such thing scripture because faith is based on what god has said faith is agreeing with god god says go right i don't understand how it's gonna work out but because he said let me go right because i believe him i will go right mm -hmm. that's faith that's why the bible says it is impossible to please god without faith if God says, go into the wilderness, I will send ravens to feed you. I should boldly go into the wilderness because God will indeed send ravens to feed me because he's not a man that he should lie. He has no reason to lie. Mm -hmm. So, faith is misunderstood because the people who are teaching faith, they're teaching works. Mm -hmm. Then they say, faith without works is dead. What they are not understanding what that scripture actually says. Faith, saying I believe without moving with it, you have not completed faith. If I say you are my daughter and I don't teach you, 
then you're not my daughter. If I say you're my spiritual son and I don't teach you, then I'm not, I don't guide you. I am not your father. Is that making sense? So for me, when I begin to teach you, then now I am being a father. It doesn't matter that I have the intention to teach you. What matters is that I am teaching you. Yes. Kevin Mulenga says, you are a spirit. (laughs) The reason why so many people are confused is because they have fairy tales about God, yet God has exposed himself to us. The Bible says that Jesus was crucified naked. You know that? He didn't have the little cloth that people put there. Now, let me, let me explain to you the truth about it, the revelation of this. I'll teach it another time, but I'll just give you a revelation of it. To the world, he was being shamed. To us, we saw who he really is. Mm-hmm. 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 To the world, they were shaming him. To us, he exposed himself to us. Yeah. His stripes, his healing... We saw his blood, which is where salvation came from. We saw his face. We saw God. We saw him for who he is. We saw love on the cross. Mm. They saw shame. I wish that would enter somebody to understand. They saw shame. We saw love. So the greatest... The greatest and the greatest and the greatest level any man can ever get into with God is believing in what God has done, not believing in what you can do. This is where the church has failed. Hmm. You go into church, you say, God, I welcome you in this place. Whose house is it? It's his. How can you welcome God in his house? But it's because we don't know that he's already gone ahead of us. We are not aware of this omnipresent, omnipotent. He says, if two or three are gathered in my name, in my purpose, I am in their midst. When you are coming, just the fact that we decided that we are coming together is already there waiting for us. Mm -hmm. Because it is him that made us to come together in the first place. Yes. But somebody that does not carry this understanding will continue to be in a place of maybe... The spirit of fear is attacking me. Maybe the spirit of death is coming after me. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay. Is it helping somebody? I, yes. If you're being helped, I want you to type, I'm being helped right now. <laughs> um, so you, you, a little bit ago, you talked about how, um, was it that you get to a certain point mm. where you no longer pray for things that they just they they just because you're believing the word? Yes, that, let me. So you mm. already know that it's going to. Okay, because okay. because there's a difference. I, I understand what you're trying to phrase. Yeah. How do you get to that place? Yes. Don't you see some people just stop praying for things? That's not what I'm yes, saying. Yes, that's what I want to do. Let me explain to you. My son knows for a fact every day at this time he will be picked up. He will not be left at school. Mm -hmm. In the beginning he will be like, oh, uh, uh," maybe as parents sometimes will be five minutes late, ten minutes late. It happens from pickup time. But he knows for a fact I'm going to be picked up. I'm not going to be abandoned at school. Mm -hmm. So when you build your confidence in what God can do, you no longer pray for it because it's become an expectation, because it's become a knowing. Yes. A knowing is because you have done that thing over and over and over. It's, called, it's like muscle memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus never prayed for bread to be multiplied. He knew that God, remember he's teaching people how to pray. He's saying, give us this day our daily bread. So when it came the time for actually people needed bread, he said, Father, I thank you that you give us bread. Uh Broke it, said, give it to people. 
He was an expectation. He didn't even say, Lord, I pray her. When <laughs> somebody put their hand in the, back, uh, in the basket, huh? when they take out one and may five replace it, he never needed to say that. He knows, God, you brought all these people here for me to teach them and you want me to continue to teach them. You already provide our daily bread, so I'm going to break this so that the disciples can have faith, but uh, feed your people. So every time people are putting their hand, bread was just multiplying, and he did that twice. The first time, 4,000 people. The second time, 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus fully believed in the provision of his father. When they came and told him, you need to pay taxes. He said, oh, no problem. He told Peter, go catch fish. The first fish you catch, open his mouth, you find gold coin. Pay your own taxes because you avoid taxes. And then pay mine also. So he never worried about resources. He knew where it was. The children of Israel are in the wilderness. They tell Moses, we want bread. How do you ask for bread in the middle of the wilderness? There's no bakery. But their confidence in their God was so much because they saw a cloud in the day. They saw a pillar of fire at night. They saw God with them all the time. They said, well, he can surely give us bread. Mm -hmm. Bread is not, he parted the Red Sea. What the heck is bread? Mm -hmm. They said, we want bread. God said, okay, tell them every morning bread will come. They don't even need to store. Every morning they will have bread. Did, did they ever pray for bread after that? They actually got tired of bread. They said, we want meat. Quail just started falling from heaven. <laughs> Special delivery. Uh -huh. The level of believing in God's provision is based on your belief on God. Not empty believing. It's because you actually know him. Something that is annoying is not something you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. I am not hoping God will speak to me. I know God speaks to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am not hoping perhaps God will protect me. I know God protects me. Yes. I am not hoping maybe God will hear me. I know he hears me. I don't think God is going to leave me because he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It has nothing to do with me. He did not say he will leave me when I am bad. You see, the church believes I sinned, the Holy Spirit will leave me. That's not true. It was true for the Old Testament, not for the new man. Mm -hmm. Because remember, the Old Testament people were not born of God. The new man is born of the Holy Spirit. No parent is abandoning their child, especially not God. That is why he's making this statement. I will never leave you nor forsake you. In the Old Testament, he will say, if you keep my words, then I will be with you like I was with Moses because you're not really his children, but you are carrying the seed of the future that will be his children. Then the new man is saying, I won't leave you. I will be with you till the end. I will be. How much has love purified you? How much has love purified you? Oh. You guys know my heart and how I always give. Yeah. Yeah. I always give to people. Always, 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 always. It's because I am always confident in God's provision. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. The same God that brought me to this place is the same one that will continue to keep me and take me. How much have you allowed love to purify you? Is the question. How much has love purified you? You need to ask yourself. If you are afraid, it means there is torment in you. You have opened a door for the devil to torment you. Mm. Let me show you a scripture that will shock you. Now you will understand what I'm saying. <coughs> <coughs> you have a question? Go ahead. Some people might ask, is doubt? No, doubt is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. God actually doesn't mind doubt. You know that. Mm -hmm. Doubt is asking God a question. Are you sure? God will reassure you. What God hates is unbelief. So you can like doubt and still yeah. do what and still do Jesus, what? Jesus never so rejected you're... anybody that doubted. So if you're like, if you're like, if God's like, go right, or go right, and you're like, I don't know, but you go right anyway, it's still... Yay! Yeah. 
Yeah, because this is the thing. Doubt should make you go to God to reassure you. Yeah. God wants doubt to bring you to him. Yes. Because he will answer Amen. you and he will remove doubt from you. Amen. But unbelief is what God hates. <laughs> My brother Juma, <laughs> God is good. God is not worried about doubt. That's a lie of the church. That is why Jesus, when the man came to him and he was doubting that his son could be healed, he said, I took him to your disciples and they could not cast him out. Because his disciples could not do it, he doubted that Jesus could do it. Then Jesus said, how long shall I be with you? He said, Lord, help my unbelief. Yes. Jesus rebuked him for unbelief, not doubt. He did not say, help my doubt. Mm -hmm said unbelief. He did not believe anymore mm -hmm. because he suffered with this condition for so long, took the child in doubt to the disciples of Jesus and they couldn't do it. Then his doubt That's turned to unbelief. unbelief. Okay. Uh. <laughs> did that make sense? Yes. Ah, the computer is dead, is dead, Cloud. You didn't charge it? Huh? Ratatabakaste. Uh, can, can you hear me? Let me show you something. Are you ready for this? Watch this. Uh, let me grab it for you. Karabashante lekista aparadia. Go to. Go to. Go to Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse three to five. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. ready. Uh -huh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh -huh. For the weapons of our warfare are not uh -huh. carnal, but uh -huh. mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So where are all these things? In your mind? Yes. When the devil attacks somebody, he attacks your mind first. <laughs> I'll say that again. Yeah. When the devil attacks somebody, he attacks the man mind first. Mm. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. When a demon wants to destroy somebody, he goes for your mind. The spirit of poverty is a mindset. Yes. Ooh. Ephesians 6, chapter 12, uh, verse 12. Ephesians 6, 12, huh? Read. Yeah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, uh -huh. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, uh -huh. of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, keep reading. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, uh -huh. that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Notice, why are you standing in the evil day? The day that you will be t tested. Mm -hmm. But the stronghold is in the mind. Mm -hmm. Casting down every imagination in the mind. Because when a demon attacks you, he makes you believe that he's powerful. It makes you believe that he can do some crazy stuff to you. That they can appear in your bedroom and ah, and you get scared. Mm -hmm. Because as a man thinketh so is he, not as a man prayeth. So the more you believe that the devil is powerful, in the realm of the spirit you have actually empowered him to, to torment you. Angels are empowered by our prayer. If the, for those who didn't know, I will, I will teach about this. Uh, maybe I'll continue this series tomorrow. And, and evil spirits are also fed by our fear. Mm -hmm. 
It is their strength in, in us. So whenever we are afraid, we are empowering our spirit. That is why the more fear consumes people, the more dark things happen to them. To be cautious and to be afraid are two different things. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if somebody is catching me. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, you, you're probably getting to this, so if I'm getting ahead of you. No, it's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so when you have fear, yes. what do you do? Go to God. Okay. Go study. It's not even a matter of prayer. Mm -hmm. Go open your Bible because only perfect love is casting out fear, not prayer. You don't overcome fear by prayer. It's a lie. Mm. <laughs> Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. So fear is a result of you, know, you don't know he is with you. You don't know that he can do it for you. You don't believe he can provide for you. You don't believe he can heal you. You don't believe he can open the door for you. You don't believe these things, so you are afraid. Yeah. Because you think according to your strength, you have already failed. Mm -hmm. According to where you are, you cannot make it. Because you know yourself and you know that you are limited. Is there anything too difficult for the Lord? Absolutely not. But you think there is because you are thinking of God like you. Like you. Yeah. And ah. God is not you. I was just thinking that. Wow. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Notice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John three sixteen, That whosoever shall believe. What is he saying, whosoever? God knew some people won't believe. But he was confident in his love that he had no fear. When you're about to give somebody something, we always think, are they going to be grateful? Are they always going to be in our life? Are they always going to do that? Because we have fear. Yeah. When I help people, I don't care whether they come say thank you, whether it will be nice, but do they have to? Absolutely not. I did what I did because I love I have no expectation for people because my reward comes from him. Amen. But if we expect things from people, we have to, oh, he didn't even say thank you, I won't do it again. Then you never wanted to do it in the first place. Yes. Yes. That is why God never says, you must thank me when I bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God said, remember me when you enter in the land of milk and honey. But he did not say, remember me so that you thank me. He just said, remember me, don't forget about me. Because people who love you, they just want you to remember them. Man, thank you, Lord, for that person. That's their desire. Not, they don't want advertisement. Oh, you know, so-and-so helped me. Oh, he helps people. That's not what a person who wants to help wants to do. Mm -hmm. So this is what people need to do. Tonight, I'm going to finish with this. Then I think we'll continue this tomorrow. Was it helpful? Very yes, very helpful. So far. Maybe we should delete it. Maybe we should delete this. Maybe we should delete it, right? Let me download it real quick. Download it real quick. The reason why I'm here, even though I'm not feeling well from my trip, is because nothing can stop what God wants to do. Amen. I'm so relaxed. Thank you. Amen. But that also shows you the kind of person God has sent to you. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of Jesus. So, tonight, don't pray. Take your Bible. Go on Google. Get all the verses that assure you of who God is. That is why some people, they knew him as Jehovah Jireh because they were in a place that they needed provision. Mm. Whatever place you give God confidence, that's where God will visit you. This area I can't. I need God of that provides fish. 
He will give you plenty of fish because God will convict your heart. by the giving that he provides for you. Amen. That's why you find that's why you find the Lord Jesus gave Peter so much fish that Peter began to repent. He said, "Get away from me, O Lord, for I am a sinner." Mm-hmm. But Jesus never called him a sinner. Mm-hmm. So God changes you, love purifies you that you begin to remove the things that were wrong with you. But people try to go to Jesus perfect Jesus won't do anything because that's pride. Mm. Allow God to change you. Mm. My my son the superstar proud refuge. Mm. I, I love him so much. He's going to be one, a great voice for this generation big time both musically and spiritually. Amen. Amen. It is it is uh, uh, go back to Facebook. Let me let me see some Facebook people. Can you go up let me see let me see some uh So many people are not spiritually stable because you don't know God. Uh Kevin Mulay, what did he say? Can you read it to me? Prophet sir, people who are submitting to you are privileged to have you as their spiritual father. It's not rare to find and you're trying to say it's rare to find yeah. a man of God like you who are able to review the deep <coughs> Every time I listen to your teaching, the prophetic in me gets provoked together with the spirit of revelation. Mm-hmm. I love you, sir. Uh, God bless you. It's a privilege. It really takes God. Amen. So my prayer for everybody tonight. Oh, love you too, Liana. Love you too, my daughter, Liana. God bless you. I want you to go to sleep tonight with a verse in your mind. If you have that's why that's why when I thought about the blood of Jesus people were angry with me saying, "Oh, demons were attacking me at night and I covered myself in the blood and I God I told I said, "Listen, God just favored you and was merciful." <laughs> the reality is this. That's that's a pointless prayer for he shall set his angel he shall give his angel charge over you my confidence in knowing that the angels of god are with me is my security that is why even the lord jesus in his ministry satan wanted to see his confidence in the angels that were given charge over him when he stopped when he finished the temptations you see his angels coming to minister to him but the angels actually stood they were stopped by his father to see if he really is confident in them to help him in his ministry before the lord jesus went on the cross said father if it is your will let this cup pass because he was shaken it was fearful mm-hmm. but the, what does the bible say he sent his god sent angels to comfort him mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i wish people knew that not only is the holy spirit our comforter yeah. not only jesus is our comforter yeah. even angels are our comforters mm-hmm. Then we have even comfort from brothers and sisters in the saint. Yeah. There is no f- reason why you should be afraid. Amen. There is no reason why you should say I'm by myself. All these are because you are depending on your strength or you're depending on physical things that you can understand. But you have not matured yourself to believe in the greater provision. Have you ever just woken up one day and you just feel motivated to take on the day? Yeah. How do you think you felt that? There was an angel that boosted you. He spoke to your spirit said, "Today you're going to take over." Yeah. And you Amen. got strength. You said, "Yeah, I just know that I'm going to do it, but you don't know that somebody spoke to you." Oh. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> but because you're not aware of your spiritual nature, you just feel like today is that day. Mm-hmm. And there are days that also a demon will come and whisper, "Today your day will be bad." 
and you wake up and you say, ah, it's just one of those days I don't feel like any. Stop and say, no, I have the angels of God with me. God is on my side. Who can be against me? Yes. Whatsoever I shall touch will prosper. Amen. Amen. You change the dynamics of everything. Mm-hmm. It's just a test. Amen. I love one quote that says, champions are not born, but they are made. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can become a champion for Jesus. I'm going to pray for everybody right now. And uh, I believe tomorrow morning I'm going to come on and uh, and then we're going to do it again. What do you think, Bishop Claudius? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, can do it. we can do it in the morning, right? Yeah, we can do it in the morning. Uh, tomorrow I'll go even deeper. Amen. Amen. I'll break it down even deeper. Any questions from you guys before I pray? Um, go meditate. <laughs> Meditation is so important. Facebook, let me see Facebook. And, uh, and uh, Facebook. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, perfect. Periscope real quick. Okay, let's, let's pray for people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So make sure that you're subscribed so that when I come on, it just alerts you that I'm on. Okay? Everybody, subscribe to my YouTube, my Periscope, my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me everywhere. And those who want to give, go to prophetlovey.com and give whatever God puts on your heart to give in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for everybody that is watching and I bless them with every blessing. We thank you that because of your love that we are purified in it that we have no fear. That you are with us even when we are in our errors. You are still there to remove us from the air. Father, let your children know your love today. Give them the grace to meditate on your word, to seek you, to know you through your word, that their lives will never be the same. I secure them and I thank you for removing the lie of the devil from their minds. Let them move to a new level and to a new dimension. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless everybody. Those who have not signed up for Prophetic School, so, uh, subscribe to Prophetic School. You want to give an offering, go to prophetlovey.com. God bless everybody and good night.